This strange gloom keeps getting thicker. We've been descending for a while now. These tunnels are deeper than I thought. What could be down here? And just like that, our adventure begins. Hey everybody, it's ZM, and welcome to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. We start off the game with Link and Zelda investigating beneath Hyrule Castle. As Zelda is trying to find the source of this gloom she's speaking of. And let me just say, this is the darkest a Zelda game has ever started. I mean, we're right into the thick of it, literally underneath Hyrule Castle trying to investigate whatever is plaguing Hyrule. And honestly, I don't know if I can handle it. This is too dark for me, so screw that, I'm leaving. Link, has something caught your attention? Whatever it is, we can plan to look at it on our way back out. Let's continue our descent. Okay, well, it seems like I can't escape this. But, I mean, I guess I'm ready. I got the Master Sword with me. Max hearts and stamina, something we couldn't actually achieve in Breath of the Wild. Because if we wanted max stamina, we would have been missing two heart containers. But, yeah, it seems like Link has gotten a bit stronger since Breath of the Wild. And is now ready to do something completely new. This is honestly the coolest star a Zelda game has had, let alone a sequel. And I cannot wait to see what's in store. So without further ado, let's continue walking by Zelda's side and see what awaits down here. <clears throat> okay. People have been falling ill after coming into contact with the gloom drifting through these caverns. Though here it seems almost misty and not concentrated enough to harm us. We'll keep going with it coming up from beneath Hyrule Castle. We do not know what waits below, so we need to be ready for anything. But I know I'll be okay with you, Link. Let's go solve this mystery. Now I have to say, it's cool to hear Zelda be confident towards Link, as she never gave us that in Breath of the Wild. But obviously after everything they've been through, uh, she has a lot more confidence in him. And yeah, to me, this is such an insane star. I mean, we're with Zelda and we're just continuing downwards. Now, what is cool is Zelda has a fair bit of dialogue that she can uh, explain to you about underneath Hyrule Castle and everything she's learned about it. And I do want to exhaust it because you'll only be able to hear Zelda speak about it down below here. So I never imagined this was all deep beneath Hyrule Castle. If you speak to her again, when I was a child, I asked my father if there was anything below the castle. He told me there was, though seeing it for ourselves or even discussing the matter was forbidden. No one in our family knew anything more than that. So Zelda's straight up breaking the taboo here and doing something she shouldn't do, but let's continue speaking to her. I can recall what my father said even now. No one must ever venture beneath the castle, not even one of us. He said this warning had been passed down through my family for as long as anyone could remember. Huh, okay. We need to continue to explore this underground, forbidden or not. The source of the gloom is down here somewhere. Okay, and I believe that's it. No, okay, I'm determined to discover the connection between this place and the emergence of the gloom. Let's keep going on. We're sure to find some clues to all of this ahead. And I do believe that's all the dialogue. Yes, okay, there we go. But it is cool that Nintendo went out of their way to give us a bunch of dialogue just in case we decided to continuously speak to Zelda. This is something we don't normally get. Literally walking by the princess's side. Uh, it, it's so cool to see. And uh, yeah, it probably won't last for long expecting what will happen ahead. But whoa, as you can see, the Master Sword is glowing. And <gasps> Zelda even noticed. Link. The Master Sword. It must be sensing something. I knew we had a reason for concern. Ever since the end of the Calamity, the castle has fallen into neglect. Hmm. 
But I never could have imagined anything like these tunnels were hiding here. We must be careful as we move deeper. Alright, sounds good. And actually, you don't have to wait for Zelda to walk really slowly. You can kind of rush ahead and beat her. But no matter what, you'll be stopped and forced to examine certain things you find in these underground ruins. And well, Link, look here. These are the ruins from an ancient civilization. Wait, something is written here. Might these ruins be from the Zonai? She said it, she said the word, yes. It is crazy how the Zonai were just forgotten ruins in Breath of the Wild, but how much we learn about them in this game. And we're gonna continue to learn about them under here with Zelda, as we have this to examine as well. Oh, look at this. These carvings. I'm sure they're Zonai in origin. I've seen designs like this in my studies. The Zonai are said to have lived long ago, in the time of earliest legend. They possessed godlike powers and had a prosperous civilization in the sky. Many history books tell us about the Zonai, but none give us a full picture. Much is still unknown about them. Yeah, it's insane how Nintendo had pretty much planned this whole concept from Breath of the Wild and showcasing these ruins. And speaking of which, the statue's there. What about them? Is this what the Zonai looked like? They seem so different than us and such long ears. Hey, I want to be talking. You have long ears too, Zelda. Relax. How did the ruins from a civilization in the sky end up here beneath the castle? It looks like the path ahead goes even deeper. Let's continue, Link. Alright, and I love how she's taking photos with her Sheikah Slate. Uh, or, you know, it's actually something a little bit different. It's a bit of an upgrade from the Sheikah Slate. But regardless, we'll figure out all of that later on. Let's just continue onwards. And whoa, some keys. Talk about some really scary baddies. Okay. You are not hurt, are you, Link? Look at these murals! <sighs> the written histories of the royal family include stories of a great war fought long ago. It was a conflict between allied tribes and someone only ever referred to as the Demon King. Is it possible? Do these murals depict the same legend? <sighs> this is similar to the statues we saw earlier, a Zonai. And these figures look like Hylians. This depiction certainly suggests that the Zonai descended from the heavens. that my ancestors, the first of Hyrule's royal family, were born from a union with gods who had descended from the heavens. These murals tell a similar story, and if they are accurate, then the gods mentioned were the Zonai. They must have forged a relationship with the Hylians of that time, working together to establish... the kingdom of Hyrule. This figure, he seems to be stealing something of incredible power from the young kingdom. This all aligns with what I've read during my studies. And then this, it shows the demon king. And a fierce battle against him. <clears throat> If the creature depicted here really does represent the Demon King, then... Oh. Incredible! 
incredible. This mural must be the Great War recorded in the royal histories. This is the imprisoning war and the events that led up to it. Link, this is a huge discovery. <laughs> All right then, now to use this invention of Pura's. I'm glad I didn't leave it behind. It's so easy to record. You point it and click. Oh. Oh, it looks like the rest of the mirrors are obscured. <clears throat> Just what is this place? Maybe we'll find more answers farther ahead. Link, let's keep moving deeper. Now Zelda saying this was a huge discovery was no understatement, as according to these murals, what we know of Hyrule's history may be completely off, as we never knew the zone I played an integral part of Hyrule's history. And now we're figuring this out now? It makes it seem that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is in a timeline of its own. And we're going to continue figuring out what the Zonai are and how they affected Hyrule. But let's save that for later, as we're continuing to venture beneath Hyrule Castle. And as you can see, the closer we get, the louder and more ominous the music gets. Because we're slowly approaching, yes, this, oh my god. And the way the music has now just gotten so creepy is letting you know that we're staring at something absolutely terrifying. So let's go ahead and check it out. What is this place? Let's continue, Link, but we must be extremely careful. Now saying yeah. Now even though I'm terrified, really the only option is to say okay, because saying not yet will just have you delay what happens next. What is that?
Link, finally you wake. I've heard a great deal about you from Zelda. Your wounds were severe. I am relieved to see you escape death. Your arm, however, was beyond saving. I had to replace it, lest the injury endanger you further. Now this is more likely how a Zelda game begins. Yes, back at square one with only three hearts, as Link has been stripped from everything except his Master Sword. But his Master Sword is no longer the same. As you can see, it's been completely destroyed from what happened beneath Hyrule Castle. As this is known as the Decayed Master Sword. The sword that seals the darkness. Its sacred power has been diminished after being ravaged by the gloom beneath Hyrule Castle. So while we get the Master Sword early on, it ain't the Master Sword we know, as it only does one damage, which is so weak even compared to a tree branch that you'd find early on within the game. And uh, we're still gonna need it, because speaking of branches, we're gonna have to destroy these that are in front of us right now to get by. Even though the Master Sword is destroyed, it has a bit of sharpness to it that will let us continue onward. And as we can see, uh, this weird hologram of a green hand, and it actually looks like Link's new hand. And I like how Link kind of figures out what to do. Well, huh, this hand looks like mine. Let me touch it with it. And just like that, it worked. And that looks familiar. Oh. Yeah, it sounds like church bells, which is pretty cool. But yeah, obviously by touching this green hologram, we were able to activate this area with a blue uh, pad that has appeared, kind of like the Sheikah teleportation areas we know from Breath of the Wild, and they will act exactly like them, hence why they look like that. But also it has opened up this door and gotten some of the gears to get moving. But okay, let's continue onwards and uh, jump down. Yes, this is a great start to the game. Though I have to say the beginning was a bit too intense for the beginning of a Zelda game. I love it though, because it is a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. So I do expect some events to happen in the beginning to set us up. But yeah, now it's feeling more like a traditional Zelda game and more so like Breath of the Wild with Link now investigating a completely new area as he must escape the area he awoken in and uh, yeah, get ready to start his actual adventure. And here we have a chest that holds something we need, and that is the archaic legwear. Simple, classic legwear. They're well worn and showing their age, but they still have got a few good years left in them. It can be a bit cumbersome to have to tie the straps. All right, let's go ahead and put it on, though. It looks a bit ridiculous. Link has a kind of Greek mythology look to him. That's what I'm getting at from this outfit. And we're going to figure out more about it and who wore it. Obviously, we can already tell from the ruins we saw earlier beneath Hyrule Castle that they're related to the Zonai. But now, let's go ahead and get a better look at where we are at the moment. Yes, we're all the way up in Hyrule Sky. And this is the true opening for the game. Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I honestly didn't think Nintendo could top Breath of the Wild's opening sequence, but they truly have with Tears of the Kingdom, as not only are we shown Hyrule and its surface, but we're shown the sky and all above as we begin our adventure by diving into this lake and making our way 
to our first Sky Island. It known as the Great Sky Island. Yes, essentially the Great Plateau of this game, which is the tutorial section. We can see a dragon, we can see a lot of cool mysteries, but let's just start our adventure by continuing our way throughout here and seeing what awaits for us. So, okay, we got a tree branch, and as you can see, it does more damage than our decayed Master Sword. Double the damage. Uh, we also got some Sky Shrooms, as these seem to be new ingredients that we'll be able to use to cook stuff. But we also got familiar ones, like the apple that we got in Breath of the Wild as well. And here we have a new enemy entirely known as the Construct. Obviously, these are in relation to the Zonai that are found within the sky and their ancient technology. And we'll figure out more about that as we continue onwards. Let's go ahead and pick up what they drop. As you can see, a Zonai charge making it obvious that yes, they are creations of the Zonai. And we also got a soldier construct horn, which we can use uh, further in the game as uh, a weapon buff, which will be used for one of our main abilities. But we'll get into that as we continue onwards. So here we have um, a construct, but it looks friendly. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what's going on with it. Link, I have awaited for you. Princess Zelda left something for you in my care. This is the Purapad. I am told it is an invaluable tool that will provide you with direction. Alright, so it seems like Pura has upgraded the Sheikah Slate into the Purapad. And it looks so much more like a Switch than the Sheikah Slate originally did. So yeah, there we go. We got the Pura Pad, Princess Zelda's prize device. It has a variety of features that are essential for adventure. All right, and we use it just like we use the Sheikah Slate in Breath of the Wild. I received it from Princess Zelda. I have now passed it on to you. My records indicate that Princess Zelda is waiting for you in the location marked on its map. My message has been delivered. Where am I though? We stand in the Garden of Time. The Temple of Time is visible from here. It was used in the distant past. Many rites and ceremonies of the kingdom were held there. But no more. Now it is a lonely place no one visits. All right, so find Princess Zelda is our main objective. And well, Let's go ahead and pull out our Pura Pad, not Sheikah Slate. And well, huh. Well, did we find Princess Zelda? I guess not. That's a really mysterious looking dragon. But she should be below that dragon in the Temple of Time, right? Well, we're going to figure out right now as we go ahead and continue onwards and uh, examine this as, uh, as you can see, it activates a bridge that will bridge these two small sky islands together. Though it is interesting that this whole area is known as the Great Sky Island. So kind of it's all considered one island, I guess. Uh, just broken into many pieces. And uh, yeah, we have to kind of navigate our way around. As you can see, there's another construct steward. You know, the nice ones. As the construct soldiers will be against us, you know, they have to attack whatever they see. So we're going to have to deal with that. But let's go ahead and now dive once again and jump down into this lake. Um, as we don't have a paraglider yet. And of course, we're unable to, you know, break our fall. So we need the water to catch us or we're pretty much dead. But yeah, okay, let's continue onward now. And um, we're pretty much going to make our way to the Temple of Time, where we happen to see that dragon to find Zelda. And uh, as you can see, there happens to be some enemies. Now, obviously with this being a sequel to Breath of the Wild, it's running on the same engine. So we can still do the same wacky things we did in Breath of the Wild. That being, yeah, <laughs> just using a boulder and having it drop on enemies. Pretty hilarious. 
And uh, we actually picked up a wooden stick, which just doubled the damage of the tree branch. So let me go ahead and put it to use and take on this construct. And wow, we killed it a lot quicker than the previous one. We also got a long stick and some of the parts that it dropped. Not bad. There happens to be another enemy here. Let's go ahead and quickly take it out as well. Yeah, they're pretty much relentless. If they see you, they're going to chase you. So we're just going to kill anyone that does catch our attention and um yeah we should be fine nonetheless as you can see there are so many constructs but these ones are the steward ones they look a lot different so it's easy not to mistake one with the other and there's a toasty sky shroom ah, i roasted that but it is yours if you want it okay thanks oh i had not noticed before that you were unfamiliar to me my apologies among my tasks is to explain anything that visitors might require knowledge of you may have questions about this place. Please rest assured that a construct can answer them. An example of a question you might have is how to roast food. This would be an especially good thing to ask me about. Well, we don't really need to do that as we have played Breath of the Wild and pretty much this acts like a similar tutorial that we got from the old man on the Great Plateau. As yeah, this whole area is very similar to how the Great Plateau pretty much worked in Breath of the Wild, being a giant tutorial area to familiarize yourself with the game and what's up ahead. And I totally understand why Nintendo decided to kind of reuse that concept in this game, just for those who may have not played the prequel and jump straight into this sequel. Now we have this enemy here, another construct, but it happens to have a shield on it, and we got it to drop it. A old wooden shield that looks really cool because it has some Zonite design, which I absolutely love. Uh, but now let's go ahead and kill this construct as it happens to have a sword as well and i want that sword even though it is just a rusty broadsword who cares anything this early on in the game will do and let's go ahead and pick up its parts but yeah now we have reached the temple of time so we got to go ahead and it seems like we need to interact with this hologram that happens to be at its door That door will open only to those with sufficient power. I'm sorry. I did not intend to startle you. It was I that spoke to you earlier. That arm originally belonged to me. I am Raro. Forgive me for appearing to you in this manner. Unfortunately, I no longer have a physical form. In any case, that arm should allow you to open this door. It seems to have lost the power to do so. You might be able to restore it, but you would need to enter a place filled with sacred light. Of course. Why not visit the shrines on this island? The shrines. Yes, I am sure they are the key. So, it seems like that was a Zonai. Yes, Raru, a familiar name we know from the series, has given Link his arm and is allowing him to use it to pretty much solve everything within this game as it pretty much acts like your Sheikah Slate. And we're going to now learn more about it as we take on a shrine that will help us get more abilities for this arm, similar to how the Sheikah runes played in Breath of the Wild. Now let's go ahead and make our way to this first shrine. It's pretty simple. It won't require much as we just got to pretty much walk our way there. Um, as we continue with the route, 
the Great Sky Islands. It will get a bit more difficult to kind of navigate around, but for the first shrine, it's pretty simple. Overall, there's so many similarities to Breath of the Wild, and it makes absolute sense, again, with how I've mentioned that this is a direct sequel, and just in general, this is meant to be the tutorial section. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and continue onwards. We picked up some rush rooms, you know, something we've seen in Breath of the Wild. Now we can easily climb our way up here uh, to our very first shrine as we're gonna take it on. It looks pretty weird though, as you can see, it's just a giant rock with one of these weird Zonai holograms in front of it. But once Link taps onto it with his new arm, it opens up, yes, a portal that we'll be able to teleport back to in the future. It looks very similar to the Shika ones, as it's also in blue, with a different design on it, though. But yes, a pretty much gate out of nowhere opens up and allows us to enter the shrine. It is absolutely insane how that works. And here is our first look at the loading screen. As you can see, it shows the map when loading, which is pretty nice, because it shows where you are at and gives you an idea of what's going on with each loading screen. More information, to say the least, which I kind of like, but okay. Ah, so you've made it here. This is a shrine of light. Long ago, I filled these places with the light that purges evil. I believe this light will restore an ability your right arm has lost. <laughs> now then, extend your hand. And yes, that may sound familiar. The same sound effect we got when obtaining a rune on our Sheikah's Light as we're getting our first ability for our new arm. It being... Ultra Hand. Grab and move objects. Rotate them and stick them to other objects. Mm. This is the Ultra Hand ability. It allows you to move objects freely and attach them to other objects. With it, you'll be able to build a great number of things, really anything you can imagine. Mm. Use Ultra Hand and receive the blessing from this shrine. And there we go. We begin our first shrine. I love the design of these areas, the ability to create. As yes, this will pretty much serve as a tutorial for our first new hand ability, it being Ultra Hand. And I have to say, this is actually my favorite ability that they've added within the game. Because similar to how Magnesis allowed you to pick up metal objects, this allows you to pick up anything that's movable. And not only that, we can attach them together as uh, let's go ahead and rotate it and make an even bigger bridge that will get us from one side to the other just like that. And there we go. We have now created a bridge double the length as the original size, which does the job just like that. And I like how it plays the fanfare once you solve the puzzle similar to Breath of the Wild. Also, as you saw, there was a chest. Sadly, these chests act similar to how they acted like in Breath of the Wild shrines. And what I mean by that is they're not important. Uh, they're just random items you can obtain throughout the game that will eventually break or you will consume. Which kind of sucks because I was hoping that this game would have added more meaningful items in chests. But again, with this being a sequel to Breath of the Wild, it's not too, you know, far-fetched that Nintendo's keeping the same kind of concept. So we're just going to ignore it. I'll be picking up all the main chests within this game because this will be a 100% Let's Play. But by 100%, I mean everything that is needed to be collected. As you can see, I created a pretty cool Zonai device there. I was able to use the crane to pretty much, yeah, get myself across. And just like that, we have completed our very first shrine. And now we're gonna see the animation that we're gonna see over a hundred times. Yes, you have done well to reach this place. Cause of course this will be the end of every shrine. Though unlike seeing monks doing specific pose, we offer this light that will cleanse you of evil. Yeah, we're gonna see this exact statue every single time at the end of each shrine. It showing a Zonai with a Hylian. It looks kind of weird, but uh, yeah, clearly Hyrule's past is something we never knew, and we're figuring out the Zonai are so important to Hyrule's history within this game, and we'll continue to figure that out. But as you can see, yes, the Orb of Light has entered Link, and by Link's face, he is surprised that, yes, 
some of the malice that essentially took all of his hearts away has now kind of cleansed them. And yes, a light of blessing is the name of these. And we're going to be getting tons of them throughout the game to upgrade ourselves. But yes, may the light of blessing grant you the strength you seek as it will slowly purge away the evil that Ganon has corrupted Link with and give us the power that we started off the game with that we had at the end of Breath of the Wild. So with that said and done, we are now teleported outside of the shrine. Again, similar to Breath of the Wild. And let's see what we have to do next. You did very well getting through that shrine and you've restored an ability. This is wonderful. If you visit and complete two more shrines, you should be able to open the door of the Temple of Time. You may want to mark the shrines in the distance with pins, then you'll never lose track of where they are. The Purapad offers a very useful scope. It's quite handy. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So yeah, we have two shrines to find and one is pretty much right in front of us. Let's go ahead and pin it on our map, just like that. And then we have another one all the way up in the cold part of the Great Sky Island. And yeah, as you can see, there are only three shrines that we have to take on to continue onwards. So don't worry, there'll be four in total similar to how the Great Plateau worked. And now let's go ahead and jump down and start making our way there. Uh, though, sadly, I kind of messed up there. Link was supposed to do a dive animation if I jumped from the proper distance of the ledge, but it's whatever. Um, I don't know why I really care about that, but I, I kind of like how you can have Link do the dive animation every single time you kind of jump from the sky or to a body of water below you. But here we have some more constructs we gotta take on. Let's go ahead and quickly take them out. And there happens to be an old wooden bow dropped by one of them. Not bad. Um, we're gonna pick up everything else to offer. Okay, some arrows. We could use that. Now we got some range attacks if needed. But yeah, now we gotta make our way to one of these two shrines that we have now discovered. And I'm gonna make my way to the one that's obviously in the non-cold area first, as it is much closer to get to. And pretty much the route you want to take if you want to kind of reach both of these shrines in quick succession and not kind of run around the map continuously and you know get lost because we can't actually teleport yet around which makes this area a bit more difficult because in breath of the wild once you completed the first shrine you had the ability to teleport to every activated shrine you had but in this game you have to complete the first three to then do that but there we go we made our way down thanks to ultra hand and we can see raru's spirit just chilling let's go ahead and speak to him i can see they're still at work even now we originally created the constructs to assist in our endeavors. All of us were fond of them. I never imagined they would continue to carry out their assigned tasks to this day. The fact mm. that their labor no longer serves any purpose, yet they perform it still, it is disquieting to me. Huh, I guess he's talking about these constructs and... Well, it seems like it is trying to chop down this tree, but having trouble. So let's go ahead and help you. Oh, it scared it. It's whatever. At least I helped you out. So what's up, man? Is that what you wanted to do? I witnessed your woodcutting technique just now. It was very well done. It was nothing. Such modesty. Your technique is impressive enough that I would appreciate your assistance. That is assuming you have time to spare. I don't have time to spare. I got to make my way to the temple of time. Uh, while well, we have two shrines to take on to open it. But yeah, obviously with taking down that tree, we can use its logs to create a bridge here. But you know what? I played Breath of the Wild. I know what to do. Yes, I actually almost fell there. But yes, with the shield surf jump, we can actually kind of, you know, create the gap there and make the jump because it gives you a little extra air than a normal jump. Uh, and you, obviously if you're not confident of doing that you could just use a log with your ultra hand and kind of just fill in the gap that way but as we can see there's a construct steward with uh, a bow trying to take out these new animals we see up here and you know what let's go ahead and kill one as you can see we got a critical hit by hitting its head which does double the damage according to the game's tutorial and we picked up some raw meat pretty cool 
Uh, these enemies kind of look like ostriches or something, but obviously there's some ancient uh, animals from the past that still exist here in the sky, which is pretty cool. And now let's go ahead and make our way up here because we can see Rauru's spirit once again admiring the view. Let's see what he has to say now. I love this view of the Temple of Time. I always took a moment to appreciate it whenever I passed by here. The Garden of Time was quiet. The only sound to be heard was the time bell ringing in the mornings and evenings. It was as if the whole place changed at its chime, especially at night, when the sound signaled the emergence mm. of fireflies. Those were glorious times. Obviously, Rauru is from the distant, distant past of Hyrule and reminiscing about its times on the Great Sky Islands with, uh, yeah, the Temple of Time. It's so cool, and I love how the Temple of Time did have its chimes during the day and night. We're actually going to hear it in 30 minutes in-game time as once 7 approaches in the morning or at night, you know, whether it's a.m. or p.m., we'll hear it. And as you can see, okay, there happens to be some constructs. If we take them on, we'll be able to get this chest that's blocked, and then we can slowly make our way to the shrine up ahead. We also got a stam bulb, which is essentially like a stamina root that looks like a bulb as well. Uh, pretty cool, but okay. Also, as you can see, our stamina is being consumed differently when we're using the, you know, formal attack with our uh, arrows. Instead, each time you shoot an arrow, it consumes a little bit of stamina instead of for how long you're in the air, it's just continuously consuming stamina, which is pretty cool, but yes, you can hear the chimes of the Temple of Time bells. Really nice. I love the atmosphere here. It is so, so nice. And yeah, it goes off twice, but yeah, with that said and done, let's go ahead and now open up this chest and get a reward. And sadly, nothing that important. It's opal. We can use it for obviously material and other things that we'll get into. But yeah, there's a body of water down ahead, but let me just see if I can. Okay, I still took fall damage, but if you didn't want to take fall damage, you could easily ignore all of that by um, just um, jumping in that lake all the way over there. You can see it by the waterfall, uh, but it doesn't really matter as we're gonna be able to heal back up fully after completing the next shrine. And I'm confident enough that we'll be able to easily take it on with uh, only having half HP. I mean, either way, three hearts is not that much. But, oh, there we go. We actually killed some choo oops. Okay, some choo choos, and we got their jellies. Yes, yeah, some enemies we recognize from Breath of the Wild. Something different than the constructs we see up here. But uh, speaking of this axe that we picked up, we actually want to use it to chop down some of these trees and use the logs to create ourselves a raft because the shrine ac actually happens to be uh, on the other side of this giant body of water. So we're gonna have to create our own way of transportation to get past it. And it is pretty cool that uh, this is how it works. Like, um, even though, yeah, you can't swim any better than you did in Breath of the Wild, so the swimming mechanic still sucks in this game, you're able to do something to get by through the water. Obviously in Breath of the Wild, we had the Sheikah rune that created the ice blocks that work as platforms. But now with Ultra Hand, we can straight up create vehicles that transport us in water. And wow, the view is just so beautiful, especially this high up in the sky. It really seems like this is what Nintendo wanted the Great Plateau to feel like, because it was elevated up in Hyrule's surface, but not nearly this high. This is truly the next level of the Great Plateau, which I find absolutely amazing. But yeah, it's uh, pretty nice that the wind is helping us. It's obviously gonna be blowing this way to help you use this little raft you create to make your way across. And as you can see, we managed to do so. I'm not gonna wait until it slowly reaches the other side. We can just swim since we have enough stamina to do that. And now we can make our way to the next shrine. All you really need to do is climb up or you can just kind of use this um, slope to, you know, yeah, easily make your way up. You don't have to consume any stamina to do so. And there we go. We made our way to the second shrine within the game. So let's go ahead and activate it. Once again, these are so weird how Link just touches the hologram. It does the similar to what the Sheikah shrines did with the blue portal activating, but then straight up a green door opens out of nowhere, allowing us to enter it. And again, I really like how the map 
is shown in the loading screens, letting know where you are, especially when entering a shrine, you can kind of remember where it is. I think it's pretty cool and pretty helpful to say the least. But yes, here is our second shrine and we have a new ability to learn. So you've made it here. Now then extend your right hand. Once again, a very familiar sound that we heard in Breath of the Wild. And well, we got ourselves the next ability in our arms, that being... Fuse. Attach something to an equipped weapon or shield to enhance it. You can undo the fusion, but that will destroy whatever has been attached. Mm. This is the fuse ability. It allows you to fuse something nearby to a weapon or shield, thereby enhancing it. Why not pick up the sword just ahead and then fuse a nearby object to it? Mm. Use fuse and receive the blessing from the shrine. Alright, let's do exactly that. So yeah, fuse is another really cool ability that actually changes up the gameplay entirely. So the ability to combine. And yeah, we're going to go to pick up this rusty claymore. You know, it's rusty. It's not really of much use. But when we decide to use the fuse ability on this giant boulder here, we can turn it into... Well, actually, let me first pull out the rusty claymore. There we go. Uh, pretty much a giant makeshift boulder-like hammer that can des destroy anything in our path. It's pretty nice. Um... And yeah, obviously it gives this Rusty Claymore a lot more durability and can destroy things it couldn't have destroyed. And here this chest holds an arrow, uh, five to be exact, nothing too special, but we are going to need them for what's up ahead here. As we can see, this chest we actually need to get, though the chest we just got isn't actually that necessary if you do have arrows on you, but uh, we're going to need this one to actually continue on. And here we're getting some fire fruit, a new item that can be obtained within this game. Uh, not necessarily wanting to be used for cooking. We want to use it for something more, more so as a weapon, because instead of having fire arrows in this game, you actually attach certain things to your arrows, which completely removes the, you know, need of fire or any elemental arrow. So there actually aren't any elemental arrows in this game. They're just normal arrows, and then you fuse everything to it. So, yeah, we pretty much made a fire arrow there, and we burnt the... Uh, platform it was on and got ourselves a small key from this chest now we can continue onwards if you somehow used all your fire fruit you could use the torches on the side to light up an arrow and then uh, do that but yeah either way we were given plenty of fire fruit so we'll be fine and now we can open up this door it takes some time to open but it's cool you know the locked doors in this game look a lot different overall the entire aesthetic of shrines are all green like and even though they're still very reminiscent to sheikah shrines they have their own vibe and look to them it being these zonai shrines and speaking of zonai instead of finding a little guardian type sheikah enemy we're finding construct like zonai enemies to take on so this enemy very easy to take on just burn what it's standing on and it should easily just kill it within a matter of seconds yep just like that we have immediately taken it out and now we can pick up its captain construct one horn which yeah we can actually use these to fuse to our weapons so all of these enemy drops that the enemies do give us are not just going to be used for certain material in like cooking or selling or upgrading, but also for making weapons and all sorts of things, which is so cool. And it will kind of make all weak weapons actually have significance when you fuse it to other things. But yes, you have done well to reach this place. And again, as you can see, the statue is no different, showing a Zonai with the Hylian. We offer this light that will cleanse you of evil. And that's what these do. Instead of powering up Link, it's cleansing him of the evil that took away Link's power, making him stronger once again, as these orbs will now act as a way to pretty much bring back Link to full strength, which I find pretty cool. And once Link touches it as it enters his arm, what I find really nice, and you'll notice this every single time, yes, some like malice-like substance 
gets removed. But Link is no longer shocked, unlike the first time he was in the very first shrine we took on. But yes, our second light blessing. And with that done, let's go ahead and continue onward. And again, may the light of blessing grant you the strength you seek. And that's exactly what we're going to be getting from them. So, okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the third shrine. All right. And it is nighttime. It looks absolutely beautiful. And well, Link, a steward construct, has something to say. I came because there's something I failed to give you. Please take it. And that is, as you can see, Link put it on his hip. An energy cell, a gift from the Zonai construct, designed to be worn on the bell. It can power Zonai devices. What I have just given you is an energy cell. It is required to make use of the tools known as Zonai devices. I cannot demonstrate its utility because there are no Zonai devices right here. However, I have associates on the other side of that cave system. They can teach you how to use this. All right. I hope that the energy cell I provided you is useful to you. And it will be, but we actually don't really need it throughout the Great Sky Island whole tutorial section. So I won't really get too much into it. Let's just go ahead and pick up this chest here. Again, not really necessary. Some arrows. Uh, like I said before, sadly, Nintendo has kind of doubled down on giving us a lot of meaningless chests that aren't that important. There will be some that we have to get, but again, don't be fooled if you see a lot of chests and you want to go out of your way to get them. Some might be completely useless. Okay, let's quickly kill this construct. As this isn't a steward, you know, it's more of the soldier ones, so they want to take us out. But yeah, you can see that the two shrines... Uh, one was here, and then the one in front of us we got to take on is in the cold. So we're going to have to be ready for that. And let me actually just quickly turn this off. I highly advise you do the same because the shrine is actually up north. And as you can see, uh, every time I moved the map, it was kind of rotating with me, which was really annoying. Now it will stay north of the map and not be rotated. Uh, I find that really annoying. And you know what? Let's just leave these guys to battle it out. It's cool how we can see like a... Uh, you know, AI versus AI type battle with the enemies. But we also have an enemy here, which is holding a really annoying weapon that will actually knock us backwards and make it uh, hard to fight. So I'm not going to bother. It is pretty much a board guster, which is attached a, uh, you know, wooden stick onto a board, which, yeah, pretty much creates gusts of wind when struck. Now, here is a Discovery Pond side cave. I'm liking how they also kind of updated the text when you do discover things. And we're getting some bright bloom seeds. These seeds are very important for pretty much the game entirely, as there's going to be some really dark sections where you're going to need to light things up, and that will come in handy. Also, some keys eyeballs, some key swings, things we've gotten before in Breath of the Wild, but actually have much more significance in this game. Same goes for the ember, because they can be fused to your weapons, which will be really important. But speaking of something absolutely new within this game, that is, yes, this fella over here. And let me actually show off the key side ball. So as you can see, I'd even aim for his head, and I managed to get a nice headshot. And yeah, it looks like, as I mean, obviously by the bloopy that ran out of it, it looks like a Lord of the Mountain, but a frog. And it drops bubble gems. Now, we're going to get more into all of that later on and discover what it is, but it's interesting to see that there's a different animal that also carries similar looks to the Lord of the Mountain from Breath of the Wild and also somehow has bloopies in them. But yeah, you can't actually get money from those bloopies if you try to hit them with arrows or quickly attack them as you did in Breath of the Wild. Though, don't worry, there are bloopies you can farm money from like rupees altogether you know they're called bloopy they give you rupees but okay we broke our boulder hammer though luckily i can just fuse a uh, weapon with another rock and kind of make another kind of hammer you could say uh, obviously this one will be not as strong as the one we got from the shrine but still can break rocks can break uh ore deposits as you can see here just takes a bit longer and we could pick up some uh, more material that we're gonna need, but let's go ahead and ooh, pick up a giant bright bloom seed So it's a much bigger version that will kind of illuminate the way much better And there's a chest this chest we actually want to pick up because we're gonna get ourselves 
the archaic tunic. Yes, old-fashioned upper body wear. It's got some holes, but it's soft cloth feels good to the touch. It's hard to keep wrinkle-free. Pretty nice. And yeah, now Link has the whole Greek mythology look going on. This is the Zonai look. Um, he looks so cool in it, and I'm liking it. He's pretty much well-dressed now. I mean, still looks a bit silly, but it's the closest thing we'll get to a green tunic within this game, outside of, obviously, the callbacks from previous Zelda games. But now let's go ahead and speak to Rauru as he's chilling mm. here. The steward constructs were the first to be built. After all, we crafted others suited to different roles. Culinary constructs, maker constructs, you'll find all sorts of them still active in this place. Some became so skilled within their specialties that they surpassed us. We began to learn from them instead. Hmm. You should take time out to talk to them. They could teach you many things you might not know yet. And, uh, well, I can do that. If we actually try to grab one of these logs that they happen to be by, they'll actually stop us because uh, we have to use our own logs. But, yeah. Ah, we may have need of these parts. There are more materials near the water available for your use. It is very difficult to rest peacefully when things like this happen. Yeah, they don't seem that useful. And especially how Rao mentions like they surpass them with their technique and everything. I'm not getting that vibe from them. I mean, one could barely cut down a tree. This one is too afraid for me to take parts from it. Like, come on, these sewage constructs suck. But yeah, we want to go ahead and build ourselves a raft. This time, we're not going to have uh, kind of a sail to help us. Well, instead, we're going to be using this propeller, which is a Zonai device that will be powered by batteries. And that is kind of where the energy cell comes into play. But don't worry, we don't need more energy than what these already provide. As you can see, yeah, the battery that's depleting will last until we reach this other side of water. Uh, but in general, you want to keep in mind with your energy cell that you can extend the length of these if you so desire. But like I said, you're not going to need to do that at all within the Great Sky Island as it is kind of like a tutorial area. Everything is pretty simple. And yeah, you can see a lot more steward constructs. But again, I don't see a point in actually speaking to them because all they have to offer are tutorials. There's more things to pick up. We can cook here as well. I'm not going to do that yet, though we are going to need to do that soon as uh, we're going to be entering a rather cold area of this Great Sky Island. And, um, yeah, we're going to figure out what to do as we go on. So, again, if you just kind of follow the map with me and make sure you have the map to where it doesn't rotate as you're rotating the camera, it will be very easy to make your way from one shrine to the other. So, I'm going to make this as simple as possible as I kind of make my way around. And, uh, yeah, here we found a uh, mining area. And there are actually some mine carts, which is pretty cool. And again, you may wonder what we have to do, and that is all we need to do is just go ahead and use these propellers to attach them to this minecart and use it as a vehicle. And also, let's pick up some more of these uh, bright bloom seeds, because it is going to get dark within this mining cave, as it's just called that. Uh, though, uh, while it is getting dark, and you know what, I can waste one right here, do not hit that uh, mine car or it will just leave you so as you can see if i throw something at it or just touch it hit it with anything yeah it will just leave you and if you're not fast enough to stop it it's gone so you'll end up losing the kind of creation you made which is no big deal really but let's go ahead and create a second one now i just kind of want to show that off because we're only given so many uh, devices and stuff that we can use here and if you want to make sure you're ready to go yeah there we go and then obviously if you hit it with anything even an item as you saw it will activate it so if we go ahead and throw another bright bloom seed on here it will actually deactivate it so literally anything that kind of hits the minecart activates the zonai device but by doing so oh and there we go it's 7 a.m now we can hear the chimes of the bell pretty nice but um, yeah, we made our way because it was blocked, and now please wait. This cave is especially dark. You will need a light in order to proceed to the mining site ahead. You have bright bloom seeds. Yes, I do. What a relief. Bright bloom seeds grow primarily in caves. There was a time where they once grew here as well. This cave has been mostly picked clean of them. That is because it is especially dark. The seeds were often necessary. My associates often forget to bring bright bloom seeds. I am posted here to provide a reminder. Use them to light your way if you are proceeding ahead. Watch your step. 
And yeah, that's exactly what we're going to be doing with them. We're just going to pretty much toss them. You could also uh, attach them to your arrows, but if you don't want to waste arrows with them, just go ahead and do just that. And there we go. We can continue onwards. Um, also, it's going to throw another one because yeah, it gets real dark, like super dark where you literally can't see anything around you. And here we got some Zonite. These are very valuable minerals that we're going to be using as well throughout the game. Much more valuable than all the other, uh, you know, things that we find in ore deposits. So, yeah, this cave in particular happens to have a lot of zonite within it. Something that we're actually only going to find in particular areas throughout Hyrule. So, we have to be lucky finding some here. And um, let me go ahead and just quickly... As you can see, yeah, if you do need, though... Um, and oh, okay, I, I forgot. So yeah, those rusted Zonai devices can drop Zonite charges, similar to how like the rusted guardians would drop ancient gear parts and stuff like that. But yeah, there's more rocks and more sticks if you need to make more makeshift hammers. But also, there happens to be another one of these weird-looking enemies, as you can see. And I guess we didn't do enough damage to it. It takes about three hits, but if you have a weapon strong enough, it will take much less. But yeah, we took out another one of them and we got another bubblegum. Really weird concept for a, um, and name for a, uh, material drop. But it clearly has something magical to do with Lord of the Mountain. And we'll figure that out later on. But okay, let's go ahead and pick up more Zonite. And speaking of Zonite, we'll figure out what we can do with them thanks to this forge construct. Apologies for not noticing you. I was focused on processing Zonite. This is the zona I mentioned. It is a unique material that can be mined far beneath the land below. There are trace deposits of it on this island as well, but they are limited to this cave. Our society flourished by processing this substance into other materials. Processing? Zonite is processed by smelting it into a furnace. It is thereby converted into materials with useful properties. A few such materials will be ready for your review shortly. Wait a moment. Okay, and after waiting a moment, we'll figure out what to do with the Zonite as it acts as currency, essentially. Thank you for your patience. I will now explain what sorts of materials the ore can be processed into. Zonite technology is typically powered by Zonite charges. These occasionally solidify into a form known as crystallized charges. Converting zonite into other useful materials in this way is called processing. Okay, we got the gist of it, and now we can actually use the zonite we just mined to get more zonite charges, and obviously the bigger version of the zonite charges being the crystallized charges. So, yeah, clearly zonite is a way to power things. Now we can find a lot more charges easier, so we'll use the zonite to get the crystallized ones, as obviously they are of more use than the smaller charges and again these are used for your energy cell but we're not really going to need to do any of that within here because yeah we're we're pretty much in a tutorial section and everything's going to be very very straightforward and i like how this guy was struggling but hey i did it for him and i took the zonite from him screw him i wanted it for myself and uh let's go ahead and destroy the rest of these just real quickly because Trust me, as he said, you're not going to find him outside of this cave and obviously in other particular areas. But I want to make sure to get as many as I can now. But anyways, let's see what's up here. This is a minecart station. Evacuated resources can be transported from here. Could it be that you have forgotten to bring Zonai capsules? Huh, what? well, I don't have Zonai capsules. So if you say you have some, I, I don't know why they offer us that because... He will actually give us a supply, and we can actually see the supplies. It's a good thing I said no, so I could show it off real quickly while it's sitting right there. And yeah, if we try to take it, ah, I have not given you permission to take those. Did you forget your Zonai capsules again? <laughs> I guess I have, so what are Zonai capsules? You have forgotten yours, or perhaps you may not even know what I mean. Zonai capsules are a convenient means of carrying portable Zonai devices. It is unfortunate that you seem to have none. I will lend you a few spares. And we got three fans of Zonite capsules. So essentially these are very similar to the fans that we used in the beginning of this mining area where we attach it to a minecart. But now we can carry them in our inventory and take him out at will. But obviously as he's gonna say, 
Once we take him out, we cannot put him back in capsules. So yeah, once you decide to take one out, you want to make sure you put it to use or you will use them for good. And yeah, just, it will kind of be laying there. So we're definitely going to make use of at least one of them. And don't worry, we'll be able to find much more of them throughout the game. Actually, real soon once we complete this section here. So let's go ahead and uh, pretty much grab one of these mine carts. And obviously, we're going to need to add one of these fan devices to it. So we just need to press pause. And there you go, Zonai devices. So we could take out more than one, though we only want one. So... Make sure you decrease and only have the one. And the second you unpause, it just drops out of Link's inventory like that. Pretty nice. And then there you go. We're going to attach it similar to how we did before with the other minecart to get all the way here. And now we're going to use it to just make our way across. Yeah, really, really cool concept how this is how it works. And obviously, the fan devices are the only Zonai devices we'll be able to get. Uh, shortly ahead, we're going to be able to collect much more. And overall, these will be how you pretty much create things when you don't have any uh, objects to actually grab and make use of. But anyways, there we go. We have made it to the other side. And, okay, that was a bit extreme. But yeah, Rawu is chilling. Let's go ahead and speak to his spirit once more. The time bell that sounds from the Temple of Time rings at a set time each morning and evening. Along with the constructs, we woke to the sound of the bell. When we heard it in the evening, we knew it was time to rest. It also played its part in our traditional ceremonies. In a way, it is this place's beating heart. The sight of the temple and the sounds of its bell stir fond memories in me. Now, don't blame him. It's absolutely beautiful. I would totally get nostalgic over this. I mean, I, I'm already in love with it. And it's new to me, but yeah, okay, speaking of Zonai devices and being able to pretty much use them at will, uh, we're going to go ahead and, yeah, get more of these capsules. So with these Zonai chargers, not only can you power your battery cell, but you could also use it as a gacha machine. Yes, this is essentially, you, you can say gumball or gacha machine, you pretty much throw in the um, Zonai charges as currency, and then it gives you... Yes, stuff in return. So we got a flame emitter, a portable pot, believe it or not. More fans, of course. And yeah, you could use as many as you want as long as you have Zonai charges to do so. But hey, look, that looks familiar. Yes, a Korok is in this game and we have to do Korok missions as well. So let's go ahead and speak to him. This is awful. Where is my friend? Huh? You could see me? I'm a Korok, one of the children of the forest. I was traveling with my friend, but we got separated. My friend is sending up a smoke signal. I can't wait to catch up. I'm so tired though, I can't move. Yeah, so some new Korok puzzles we have to do. Still, we'll have a bunch of similar ones from Breath of the Wild, but this one will involve us bringing this giant Korok, or rather, this really small Korok with a giant bag all the way to his friend. So as you can see, we can make ourselves another minecart. Uh, if we so desire, or you can just grab the one you already made previously. It doesn't really matter. Luckily, there's plenty of fan devices that we can use and mine carts just in case you need them. But yeah, we're going to pretty much go ahead and bridge the gap for not only the Korok, but for ourselves as we make our way to the other side. Just like that, you can also use, yes, Ultra Hand on the Koroks to pick them up and then also attach them with this glue like substance um similar to how you know you could attach material with ultra hand you could also do it with the korok so there we go just grab him pull him off of it and just like that we have now gotten him and we're gonna go ahead and drop him to his little friend and well pick up a reward so reunited at last thanks i'd like to give you something but here's all i have just some poop but two times the poop because it was two koroks yes with these puzzles you can get double the Korok seeds and believe it or not I'm just gonna say this now Korok seeds work the exact way they did in Breath of the Wild you're gonna have to get them to expand your inventory so while they are of use you don't have to go that crazy and try to collect every single one just get as many as you can okay once again we found another fan Zonai device but this time we got one of these crane like things and um, yeah we're gonna go ahead and attach it to this now it doesn't I guess 
I believe I was attaching it the right way, but you know what? Let's just put it on the wrong way just in case. We, we do need to change it. I'll show off how you kind of break an object from another. So yeah, once you attach it together with this glue, as you can see, you got to wiggle it off to disattach it to that way if you want to fix uh, your build, you can easily do it that way. I find it so cool how that works. And I love how Nintendo has you wiggle the joystick to disattach a Zonai device from another thing. Um, yeah, it, it's such a Nintendo thing to do. Like, it, it, I feel like it would have been nicer if it was a designated button to kind of uh, disassemble your builds. But it's a Nintendo game. There has to be some quirky way to do so. At least that's how I see it. But okay, again, as I mentioned before, these uh, rusted Zonai um, constructs can still have Zonai charges on them. So you want to actually pick it up. Let's go ahead and, okay, not go too fast by shield surfing because these also have Zonai charges on them. Again, very similar to how the Sheikah Guardians, the rusted ones, usually had uh, guardian pieces on them, like ancient stuff that we could find in Breath of the Wild. And again, another portable pot, really nice because we could literally cook anywhere we are. But I'm going to wait until I want to cook later on because we're going to need it again for that area. But let's go to now dive into this body of water. And ooh, you may have saw a question mark. That fish is really important to collect. And I'm telling you to collect it now. Like, you need to collect it now. Uh, I lost track of it, but trust me, it should still be in this little pond here. Uh, if you don't collect it, you're going to have to come back to the Sky Islands a little bit later in the game to get one. So just get one now. Do not cook it. Do not do anything with it. Just remember you want this ancient fish. Um, I like how it's literally known as an ancient version of this fish because, yeah, they're only located on these Sky Islands. You can't find them in Hyrule Surface. But, okay, we've reached the cold area of the, you know, Great Sky Island section. Similar to how the Great Plateau had a shrine in the colder section of the Great Plateau, this also does. And luckily, we're given spicy peppers, so we'll be able to easily maneuver. And we can cook without having to waste a Zonai device. Here in this pit cave, as you can see, we just took away uh, what the steward was trying to collect, these spicy peppers. And now we're gonna go ahead and cook ourselves a nice, delicious meal. And as you can see, yeah, Link has different humming sounds. He actually has a lot of references to older Zelda songs when he hums each time he cooks, instead of just the one humming we, you know, sound that we heard Link do each time in Breath of the Wild. He has multiple ones. But anyways, let's go ahead and kill this one as well. As you can see, there happens to be another one of these uh, weird-looking frog-like, um, you know, Enemies they are called bubble frogs if you read, you know, the description of the bubble gum that it drops. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Make sure to collect as many as you can. There's usually one located in pretty much every cave. And since these are caves, we're finding them in it as well. And not just above in the sky. We're going to find them on Hyrule's surface. So, overall, it's just a new collectible to get throughout the game. And it's really cool how we're going to kind of expand on the mystery of Lord of the Mountain. within this, Because in Breath of the Wild, it was really just a mystery. And we barely knew anything about it. But, yeah, this pathway will take you back to where that bubble frog was. But since we already killed it, we can just continue onwards. Uh, pick up more bright bloom. Very, very handy, of course. And now we could reach the top of this. But this is where we're going to need to eat our food. Because as you can see, temperatures are getting dangerously low. So let's go ahead and consume our spicy sautéed peppers. And now we have uh, 12 minutes and 30 seconds to reach our destination. Oh, okay. We recognize these enemies from Breath of the Wild. The ice choo-choo jellies. And be careful because, yeah, when you do touch them or just kill them in general, they will explode and freeze you. So we don't want that to happen. But, wow, the game is so bright. And it has nothing to do with the, con the, the contrast I add within the video. I usually add some to make the game more vibrant. But, no. You literally can't see the textures on the floor because of how bright the sun is uh, just from the game. But okay, let's be careful here because, yep, there's some more ice choo-choo jellies that will pop up out of nowhere and slow us down. We don't want that to happen. But I'm just going to ignore the constructs and, whoa, okay, a bunch of keys flying out of this cave as we have another cave, a new discovery to explore, a bottomless cave. And, again, like I said, with each cave, we're going to find a bubble frog. So let's go ahead and quickly kill it. 
we broke our hammer along the process but that's no biggie we could build another one and there we go another bubble gem and uh let that little um bloopy run away but also bomb flowers yes they are now obtained it through you know similar means in previous zelda games where you could pick them out of flowers and as you can see yeah this is why it's called a bottomless cave because there literally is no bottom to it which is pretty cool but okay let's go ahead and now continue onwards but as i was saying and actually i guess i could show off what's inside this chest again like i said you don't really have to go out of your way to collect certain chests i'll make sure to point out all the chests you need to get this isn't one of them but since it's easy to get we'll just quickly pick it up it's just an amber something we could easily mine or find all throughout the game so yeah nothing too important but yeah i love how the bombs are picked up through flowers we've had that in previous zelda games and that pretty much replaces the remote bombs we had in our Sheikah Slate. Now we literally have to find them and to make bomb arrows and everything, we pretty much fuse it to our weapons. But I won't waste any bombs yet. Let's just go ahead and kill this enemy. It's a new enemy for this game, but not the series as this is known as a like like. Yes, we got like likes back. You know me, I dislike like like. <laughs> I missed saying that. Now I can say that again because this game actually has them. Yes, it's kind of dope. They look a lot more terrifying, though, than they did in Breath of the Wild. Uh, or rather, in previous Zelda games. They didn't exist in Breath of the Wild. But yeah, in past Zelda games, they, they look much, much different. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and open up this chest here. And they just got dropped an opal. But I want to kill it nonetheless. But yeah, um, they look a lot more threatening. And they drop a like like stone. They're kind of worth killing, even though they take a while. Just because they usually have a chest inside of them. They can, though, suck you up. Luckily, they don't consume or take any of your items like they did in previous Zelda games. This would be the game that would have made a lot of sense for them to take away your weapons or something like that. But luckily, they don't. Either way, I don't want to get swallowed up by one. But maybe we can show off. Um, actually, oh yeah. Yeah, we got a flame emitter shield. So while we do have flame emitter zoni devices, we could just use one that we find on the floor and just burn this like like to crisps, which is pretty dope. Uh, obviously, that opens up its weak point, which is what we want to hit so we can get three attacks in. And I guess I'll be able to kill it real easily. I'll go ahead and use the shield once again. Actually, let's just go ahead and show off the flower bombs here. So. Yeah, there you go. It's a nice explosion. It also sets it on fire, which will then let me hit the point once again. And then we can just completely kill it as we're waiting for our flame emitter shield to regain its battery because it ran out of battery charge from, you know, the little bit we used it for. Very OP, sadly, when using Zonai devices on your weapons, even including a shield, by like shooting fire, it will slowly deplete the shield's durability, which will eventually cause it to break. But, okay, yeah, we got another flame emitter. And, um, yeah, let's go ahead and just pick up more of these Blight Bloom seeds and then make our way onward. And, oh, okay. Every time the chime goes off, it just kind of, it's just so nice that we can see the Temple of Time. We could hear it. Ah, such an amazing concept. Such an amazing view. I absolutely love it. But, okay, once you exit the bottomless cave, you want to make sure you climb right above you. Do not bother... Uh, exploring around and wasting your cold resistance timer because uh, we want to make sure we reach this next shrine. Luckily, once you complete the shrine, we'll be able to get an item that will allow us to stay in the cold as long as we want uh, without having to consume any food or anything like that. Now, if I want to shield surf, I advise not using the flame emitter shield as, yeah, you'll end up hitting it and then it will hurt you and as a result because you know you're not supposed to be riding the shield when there's a giant dragon head attached to it but okay we got some flint we can cook more food if we so desire and we got some more spicy peppers i mean we don't even need that cooking pot we got our own portable ones but regardless there we go we have made it to the next shrine uh this being the third one that will give us a new ability for our hand and uh, one of the really cool ones, I'd say this one you probably use the least, but still, it's going to kind of open up the game in many new ways. So let's go ahead and enter the shrine and see what this new ability is. All right, so let's go ahead and now take on this third shrine. And well, Rauru is going to give us the next ability. So you've made it here. Now then, extend your right hand.
All right, and once again, we hear something very familiar to what we've heard before. Uh, you know, with getting each new rune or even uh, each new tower map from Breath of the Wild with the Sheikah Towers. Like, they reused the sound effect again. It made sense in that game. It doesn't really make sense in this game. But anyways, this new ability is Ascend. Move upward through solid material and emerge on top of it. Mm. This is the Ascend ability. It lets you travel through what's directly above you to ascend through and emerge on top of it. You'll find it quite useful in all sorts of places and situations. Use mm. Ascend and receive the blessing from the shrine. All right, let's do exactly that. Now, yeah, the ability to rise. This ability is very, very useful. Um, though, like I said, it won't be as handy. Speaking of handy, we're using our hand to do it. Yeah, it won't be as handy as um, all the other abilities within the game because you really only can use it in situations like this. But there we go so there's a chest over there if we decide to ascend up there we could have picked it up but like i said the chest is probably useless and i'm not gonna bother going out of my way i just want to show up how to beat the game 100 percent everything you need to get and uh, ignore the not so necessary things but yeah this shrine altogether is very easy because just showing you the basics of how to ascend and how you can ascend over anything that is of distance above you uh, obviously if it's too high up you won't be able to reach it so with this we have to first ascend to this platform here and then quickly ascend to the uh platform right above it and luckily i was able to do it before uh that platform kind of moved or i would have had to wait for it to come back and recenter in the center there to use ascend but it's fine we did it and there we go another shrine has been complete again our third one but obviously there are four in total so we're going to figure out what to do next obviously with this being our third one we can now open up the door to the temple of time but uh yeah there will clearly be one more shrine to complete this whole tutorial section but it is cool how they changed up the pace a little bit from breath of the wild having you to take on three and then kind of do something and then take on the last one which we're going to figure out real soon but once again, Link touches the light as, yeah, this never gets old. I actually like watching this because we can see Link slowly get cleansed. Just like that, he's waiting. And there you go. The malice is slowly leaving his system, cleaning him, cleansing him with the light of blessing as it's literally known to purge ancient evil as the description of this item is known for. But again, really weird seeing these two together in one statue, a Hylian and a Zonai standing side by side. But we're going to learn all about that as we go forth throughout the game. And now, let's move. So again, similar to Breath of the Wild, once you complete the necessary shrines, you have a spirit come and speak to you. And well, I see you've restored some power to the new arm of yours. Mm. The door into the Temple of Time should now open for you. All right, nice. And um, yeah, there we go. But as you can see, the Temple of Time is really far away from where we're standing. So how are we going to make it there with these? Well, let's go ahead and ascend up here. And we're actually going to find a really nice alternative to using the paraglider. Of course, the game doesn't want to give us the paraglider yet. And that is to make use of the Zonai devices. And we're going to make real good use of it. But first, let me pick up this chest. This is mandatory as it gives us the Archaic Worm Greaves. This will allow us to pretty much uh, withstand the cold temperatures without having to cook any food. At least, you know, it will give us one level of cold resistance. So if we put it on, yeah, it looks pretty nice. I like it, but... For this tutorial area, I kind of want to keep the, you know, traditional beginner look with the archaic leg wear and archaic tunic. But, yeah, we got another Zonai charge from that rusted construct. And, oh, okay, our wooden shield is damaged. It's whatever. Um, let's go ahead and now use Ascend to make our way up here. As there happens to be another one of the Gacha Zonai machines. And I could totally use more capsules. <laughs> You know, why not? So we do have a good amount of, um, you know, as you can see, you can use bigger ones. I don't think I've gotten a bigger version of the Zonai Charge. But yeah, we can use the Zonai Charge as we found. Uh, like I said, we found a bunch through rusted uh, constructs. And we obviously pick him up from killing other constructs. You can also trade them for Zonai. Um, but yeah, we're just going to use the ones we have currently to get a good amount of Zonai devices that are in these capsules. And we got a new one known as Wing. 
so we're gonna figure out what the wing does as you can see there's one right here though I don't want to use that one because it's kind of just sitting there but let's actually speak to Rauru spirit once more since he is chilling here mm. the Zonai devices were the pinnacle of our technology we built an advanced civilization with them and flourished for many, many years. Oh. If you can master the use of Zonai devices, your quest will be much easier. All right, let's let's uh, let's do that. Let's figure out how to make use of this wing. <laughs> this is actually how you make your way to the Temple of Time with ease without having to backtrack or do anything ridiculous like that. As all we want to do here is set the wing for the direction like that and since it's on this kind of launch pad here it will slowly cause it to continue moving so you don't need like a propeller or wheels for it to be on and there you go we have taken flight it is such a cool concept how this works and obviously depending on how you weigh it down it will cause it to go in whatever direction you happen to be standing on the zonai device with but yeah this is really nice and it's cool that we have extra ones of these as capsules but yeah pretty much my goal here is to reach the temple of time like so by just riding it and yeah causing it to head down if somehow you lose control and you're about to like crash or fall off you could just jump in a body of water to easily catch you but there we go we've done it now let's go ahead and activate this There we go, the door of time is opening up. This is insane because we're seeing a different temple of time, a temple that we haven't seen ever before within the Zelda series. The original one within this timeline and oh, the game is called Tears of the Kingdom and well, there happens to be a tear. Let's go ahead and check this out. Recall. Yes, this tier has given us the ability to reverse objects movements until they go back to where they was. You can stop the reverse movement at any moment. Now, this is really OP, but let's see what Raru has mm. to say. Ah, recall. The ability to reverse the movement of an object through time. And Zelda has vanished as well. What you just mm. saw, it's a mystery even to me. Perhaps it was a sort of echo, one that reflects her sheer will. That you've been now given this ability, no doubt it will prove important. Yeah, it was a pretty weird vision there, seeing Zelda's spirit just kind of there, waiting for Link to take this object. So she isn't here. Clearly something has gone wrong, or maybe we're just not in the right time. 
And speaking of time, we can now use this recall ability that we obtained from her to literally reverse time. And what's really cool about it is, yeah, this is just so fitting for the Zelda series. Uh, stasis was nice, and this kind of acts like the new version of Stasis within this game. But being able to literally reverse time, and I love how there's no cooldown for it once you're done with it. So literally, the second you're done reversing time and getting through your object, yeah, there we go. You can reuse it. But here we have a goddess statue. We can't do anything with that since we only have three of the light orbs. So let's see if we're strong enough to open up this door. Here we go. What's really cool is, yes, it's going to consume our hearts, kind of similar to how uh, it did in Breath of the Wild when trying to do something severe. And, yeah, Link won't let himself die this time. He'll stop if he's unable to do it. This door stands as a test of your own overall vitality. Mm. You remain in a weakened state. You're not yet strong enough to open it. But there is one more shrine on this island. There you can get another blessing. If you add that to the other blessings you received at the shrines and offer them all to the goddess, you might just find your way forward after all. Let me see the Purapad. The Purapad lets you travel to certain places instantly. Now, see all the blue marks marked on your map? You could travel instantly to any of them. I'd suggest the one on the bottom of your map. Yeah, okay, so this is pretty much where we can now use it to travel as, uh, yeah, we were unable to travel between shrines up until now, mainly forcing the player to use the Zonai devices and overall traverse the map without that help. But now that we're given it, let's go ahead and teleport all the way back to where we originally woke up uh, and yeah, take on the shrine that's now marked on our map. So of course, the reason why we only took on three and then couldn't advance forward as we were missing a heart to open up that door is because yeah, we gotta take on the fourth shrine that will give us the last a blessing light that will allow us to create, you know, four, kind of like how the spirit orbs did in Breath of the Wild, which will then give you a new piece of heart or stamina, but of course we can only get a heart for now. And of course, when we did activate this way back in the beginning of the game, um, it kind of got these to start moving, as you can see, but we want them to move in reverse. So once again, we can kind of maneuver our way upwards, very similar to what we already did in the Temple of Time. We're doing it again now with these, and hopefully I don't slide off. There we go. We made it with these. And yeah, believe it or not, this is how you find where that shrine was secretly hiding. So we had to get the rune from Zelda, or rather the ability recall from Zelda. And with that said and done, we can now find the final and fourth shrine on the Great Sky Island, it being this one right here. And since we already got the ability, which is Recall, we're not going to be getting a new ability within the shrine. We're just going to be using the ability we just obtained to solve the shrine, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and take it on. All right. So, yeah, Raru isn't going to interrupt us this time around. Uh, we're just going to get right into it. The ability to rewind. And it's pretty cool. So let's quickly use it. And also you can use it from very far off distances. So not only do you not have a cooldown window for it, you also have insane range for it, which makes it super nice uh, when trying to control objects from far away and having it reverse its time. Um, it, it's just such a cool concept. I absolutely love this ability. Of course, my favorite one is going to be Ultra Hand just because it completely changes the game's way of gameplay but still this is such a cool one and i love using it but speaking of which let's go ahead and hold on tight because we're reversing this raft to go all the way back up such a cool concept as well and there we go we've made it um now there's a chest up here i don't really have to get it but let's just kind of show off again this in action as we can reverse this and have it lead our way back up just like so and pick up what's inside this chest right here, which is 10 arrows. Again, not too useful, but whatever. Let's go ahead and now jump down. And well, to solve this puzzle and complete the shrine, once these two uh, pendulums pretty much align together, as you can see, it opens up the door. So if we reverse time, it will keep, yeah, one of the pendulums to follow its direction because they were going in opposite directions. And just like that, we're able to open up the door and keep it opened. 
And now we can pretty much get the final light blessing and complete all four shrines within this. Uh, not bad. And yeah, overall, a great tutorial for the game and a great way to kind of get all uh, four new abilities that we're going to be using throughout this game to solve its many puzzles and many shrines. As, yeah, similar to Breath of the Wild, these will be your main key items, key weapons to really do things. It all relies on Link's new arm here. Of course, we have weapons that we can't find, but they're all breakable and mainly used for combat. When it comes to puzzle solving, it all is uh, down to your arm, similar to how it was all down to the Sheikah Slate in Breath of the Wild. But there we go. Another light has been obtained link has now been cleansed a little bit more and just like that we're gonna now make our way all the way back to the temple of time sadly there was no way to teleport there since there wasn't a uh, teleportation spot activated there but we'll find a really easy way to do so which i'm going to show off instead of teleporting to the nearest shrine we have a pretty convenient way thanks to the zonai devices and overall yeah, it's pretty nice. And I love how this is shaped of a dragon. There's so many dragon-like structures with the Zonai, but let's go ahead and move on. All right, like I said, I'm not gonna teleport to the nearest shrine, which was the first shrine we took on. That's the closest to the Temple of Time. I'm gonna show off a pretty easier path. And ignore that Construct Steward. We can't actually do anything with it yet, uh, but he will be pretty useful later on. But okay, the Room of Awakening. We're not really there, we're above that room. But yes, as you can see, there are more wings, uh, the Zonai device wings that we know of. And if we go ahead and place it again on these launch ways, we can quickly jump on it and then use it to pretty much take us all the way to the Temple of Time. Yes, we're so high up because obviously the Room of Awakening was much higher than the rest of the Great Sky Island. But yeah, pretty dope how this works, how you could just kind of ride your way all the way across. I absolutely love this. Now, obviously, even though I'm standing on the head of this wing, it's not going to kind of dip all the way down the way I want it to. So we're going to have to wait until Link is right above the water and then just dive our way all the way down below. This is kind of the safest way to do so. If you're not confident, just teleport to the nearest shrine and then walk to the Temple of Time. But clearly this is what the game wanted you to do if you're confident enough to use the wings and put to use all of these new Zonai devices. So we're definitely going to be making use of it throughout this playthrough. And yeah, overall, I am loving the new changes this game added to what Breath of the Wild had already established to the series. But yeah, there we go. We're done. All is said. All is good. Now we'll be strong enough to... Um, actually open up that door as we have to get ourselves another heart container um, through the goddess statue so sadly we kind of have to go through this area once more and what I mean by that is don't get me wrong I love the temple of time I love the way it looks its structure everything but as you can see yeah we got to quickly use recall to kind of jump on this real quick and then make our way up here do it once more whoa okay I, I kind of got a little ahead of myself luckily this is taking me back up uh, I guess I ran a little too fast. I got way too excited, you could say. What's nice is though, is as you can see, yeah, I don't care if that depletes all the way because I can easily use it once more. I love how there's no cooldown. That to me makes the recall ability just so much better than stasis already with what it does, you know, outside of that. But okay, there we go. And I like how Link doesn't look back. He just pulls up his hand and he's like, stop. And then it just stops the reverse of time. Uh, but there we go. So yeah, sadly you can't choose. If you're someone who wants to do a three heart run, you have to actually have four hearts early on in the game to continue uh, throughout the game. But of course, uh, you'll be able to now get stamina moving forward. So we got to have four hearts, but then from there on out, I'm probably going to focus on stamina. And again, with a new heart container, it also cleanses Link just a little bit because technically Link unlocked all of these in Breath of the Wild. So all we're doing is reversing the curse uh, that we got from the mummy beneath Hyrule Castle. And now let's go bring peace onto Hyrule. All right, sounds good. Here we go. Now we got to open up the door once again, this time with an extra heart container on our belt. So I believe we can do it. Here we go. I love how this works. I love how it shows the hearts depleting. This is such a cool concept and makes this like moment seem way more serious. But there we go. The two dragons, again, you're going to see so many dragons, including the literal dragon we see flying around all throughout the Zonai structures and artifacts. But there we go. Ah, oh, good. 
I see you have managed to open the door. You haven't fully recovered yet, but that is to be expected. You are almost beyond saving. By visiting the shrines, and receiving their blessings, you have mitigated some of the corruption's effects. Though our time together has been brief, I am so happy that we finally met. You are exactly as Zelda said. I've done everything I can for her. Now it is up to you. So yeah, lots of similarities again to Breath of the Wild. I apologize if you think I'm over mentioning that, but you know, that spirit, the name Raru being the name of what the first of King of Hyrule was named, similar to how the King of Hyrule at Breath of the Wild's time guided Link throughout the Great Plateau. He guided us throughout the uh, Great Sky Islands. And now we can make our way to this area here as believe it or not, we are about done with the Sky Islands and what we have to do is, well, reach this weird orb of golden light because there's something that we need to interact with. Clearly someone is trying to tell us something, so let's see what it is. And there we go, our adventure now truly begins to Hyrule Kingdom we come. As yes, with the clouds now parted, we can now jump off of the Sky Islands, finishing our tutorial section, and starting our adventure in Hyrule. So join me next time as we dive down to Hyrule's surface and explore it within The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom.